Uh, we have done the exact solution of uh, spin systems using Bethe ansatz. Now uh, we will do the derivation of the Van der Waals equation of state. Uh, this is called as a real gas and uh, we shall really stick to the gaseous phase of matter and not close to the transition. Okay. And uh, we will talk about the critical isotherms and uh, we will also talk about the cluster expansion of uh, the real gas. And uh, in this connection, we will introduce the notations and the graphs. Basically, the expansion will be done in terms of uh, diagrams or graphs. And these graphs will be calculated in order to calculate the partition function. So, let us start with this uh, real gas and we know that uh, the Hamiltonian. So, this is real gas or we call it as a Van der Waals gas. which means that the interaction effects are inbuilt into the system. So, H is equal to uh, say for example, P i square over 2 m sum over i, you can put a m i as well. And then we have um, i and j and uh, say j is uh, greater than i uh, and uh, you have a potential which is u i j. And uh, let us call this potential for the moment as some um, u. And uh, we will have to now consider this effect of U, which has been left earlier, where we have talked about the classical ideal gas, which is uh, uh, without any interaction. So, uh, we have to write down the partition function, uh, the usual Gibbs uh, correction factor, which comes because of Gibbs paradox. And then there is a 2 pi m divided by beta h square whole to the power 3 by 2 this is all known to you. And uh, now uh, this extra term that comes which is beta uh, u and uh, this of course, uh, depends on these coordinates r 1, r 2, r n, uh, there are n particles and then now uh, we have to uh, do this coordinate integral. So, d cube r 1, d cube r 2. Uh, let me not put the vector, but it means that it is a volume integral all the way up to d cube r n. Uh, so, this is uh, the new term that we have to consider now and this new term will give rise to this equation of state that we are very familiar with. It is p plus a over v square plus uh, into v minus b equal to r t instead of just p v equal to uh, r t. So, uh, we uh, write down this. Uh, so, this will call it as a z u. Uh, it is coming purely because of the interaction term. And uh, we have this uh, u equal to uh, u 1 2 and u uh, 1 3, u 2 3 and all kinds of terms which are all pairwise terms which are of the form um, which uh, is written as sum over uh, u i j. Uh, again j greater than i and this is uh, if you uh, write it uh, without this uh, j greater than i you simply have to say i not equal to j and introduce a factor of uh, half uh, to avoid double counting. Uh, this is all well known and uh, this uh, uij is uh, uh, that depends on the u. Uh, r i minus r j and it is actually the magnitude of that. And uh, so, it is a potential between two molecules uh, at a distance r i minus r j and um, one can actually assume a, a form which is called as a Leonard Jones form. Um, for u i j and this tells you that uh, u of r is equal to some u 0 and uh, um, so r 0 over r uh, whole to the power 12 minus r 0 over r whole to the power 6. And this is also called as a 6 12 potential because of this form uh, and uh, this r is a variable and r 0 is some uh, distance. So, uh, u 0 uh, denotes the depth of the potential uh, 
and um, R naught uh, is the distance uh, or rather this uh, uh, R min or this potential is minimum. Uh, so, this u of r is minimum at some r min which is equal to 2 to the power 1 over 6 r 0 and so on. So, it has various one can plot it and see the properties of this potential and it is called as a Leonard Jones potential and it is uh, usually uh, the one that is considered there. So, this has a form um, which looks like, um, so this is a function of u as a function of r and uh, so this is 0 and um, so this becomes um, a strongly, um, you know, so this is r 0, so that is a minimum, uh, uh, so this is equal to minus uh, u 0. So, um, is at a distance uh, r 0 uh, uh, nearly r 0, I mean uh, so this sum r 0. So, it, this is minimum at this point and uh, uh, so it is uh, strongly repulsive at small distances and weakly attractive at large distances that is a form of the potential and um, so r uh, less than r 0 uh, we call it as uh, that is the uh, repulsion, so that is repulsive and as r becomes close to 0, it becomes strongly repulsive and r greater than r 0, it is uh, uh, attractive, okay. that is the form of the potential. But this form is uh, difficult to deal with uh, for real calculations which we will also see uh, later when we use the cluster expansion. So, instead there is a uh, a simpler potential uh, is there uh, which has very similar properties, but definitely uh, is easier to deal with mathematically and that is u of r can be modeled as uh, this is equal to uh, infinity uh, for r less than r 0. So, it is like a straight potential there and it is equal to minus u 0 and we have a r 0 by r or I can write it as a small r. Uh, so, this is uh, if r is greater than r 0 and uh, this is to the power s and um, so this actually uh, behaves like this. Okay? And uh, so, this is again r 0 and this is that u of r and uh, s is equal to 6 is most common. So, let me just go back and uh, reiterate what we have said is uh, that uh, we start with a pairwise potential that is the uh, molecules of the gas are interacting via pairwise potential interaction and we have to calculate the partition function. The partition function contains now a new term which is ZU and uh, it has to be computed and for that one makes a uh, model for uh, U uh, to have this form which is a Leonard Joe's potential. As I said that it is a uh, little more difficult to deal with not that it cannot be done, um, but we uh, resort to a simpler potential which will eventually give us the equation of state that we are looking for and uh, which has a, a straight wall uh, you know at uh, r less than r 0 and it goes to infinity and then uh, it falls off as r 0 by r whole to the power s and it is um, uh, weakly uh, sort of attractive at large distances. So, u of r instead of this um, a form that is shown in the Leonard Jones, it is uh, modeled by just a sharp drop of the potential to from a positive to a negative value for r less than r 0. Okay. And as I said that uh, s equal to 6 is most common. Now, we calculate um, z u and this is the important task that we have in hand and uh, once again just to write this in terms of uh, term that we have is 
so it is exponential minus beta u and then all these volume integrals. Okay. So, that is what it is. Uh, now, what we will do is that in order to calculate the z u, what we do is that we introduce uh, effective potential u effective and what is u effective? u effective uh, is uh, um, effective potential felt by a molecule due to the rest. Okay. So, um, instead of dealing with u, we will uh, deal with u effective and then uh, we will of course, uh, uh, establish a relationship between u effective and uh, u. And um, so, uh, this z u becomes equal to z u is equal to uh, exponential minus beta u effective function of r and a d cube r and this raised to the power n. Now, you see that it is uh, like doing a mean field theory where we have uh, replaced the u by uh, u effective which is an effective potential that one particular molecule faces due to the presence of all other molecules and that is why um, uh, there are n of them. So, n independent molecules uh, we uh, take the partition function which is uh, uh, raised to the power n because this is a potential felt by just one molecule. So, this is a, a partition function due to one molecule. Okay. Now, uh, it is important to note that uh, one that there is a uh, region of space Uh, let us call it as a V0, which is for each molecule which is uh, excluded from the integral. So, oh, one important thing is that when we write this whole integral, we uh, consider these molecules as point particles, but there is a certain region that each uh, molecule actually occupies or there is a, a volume that each molecule occupies which is say equal to V0. So, um, for each uh, pair that we are considering, uh, so for each pair um, one um, uh, cannot occupy Uh, the space already occupied by others, by uh, the other, let us write it this way. And uh, there is also an important thing that uh, in this region, which is uh, uh, this region of uh, V minus V0, okay. Uh, the potential is smooth. That is the u effective is smooth. It does not vary abruptly in this region which is uh, the difference between the, uh, the volumes uh, V minus V 0, which means that your u effective can actually be uh, replaced by the average value of u effective. Okay. These are the automatic, uh, you know, the uh, implications coming out of this uh, writing this uh, the partition function in this particular fashion. Okay, all right. So uh, we'll have to now compute uh, z u, which is nothing but equal to uh, v minus v zero uh, e to the power minus beta u effective whole to the power n um, and uh, so what we need to find is that uh, v0 and u effective average have to be uh, calculated self consistently.
So, nothing much has been done excepting the fact that we have now introduced uh, that there is a certain volume that each particle or each molecule occupies and another molecule cannot come inside that region. So, there is a V minus V0 and then we uh, uh, sort of uh, this was excluded in the integral that we had written earlier and now we uh, write this uh, thing um, as uh, taking out this factor which is V minus V0 and you multiply it by uh, the partition function that we have already written and then raise it to the power n. And I hope that raising it to the power n is now clear because uh, this u effective is the potential that one molecule faces due to the presence of all other molecules. Okay. So, that is uh, uh, so the entire uh, potential pairwise potential is replaced by this u effective average. Okay. So, the first thing let us determine u effective average. Okay. So, uh, let us find this out and um, so basically what happens is that you can uh, use this u effective um, n into that this is equal to half into n into n minus 1 uh, into u average. Um, so, where is this coming from? This is uh, basically the n by uh, 2 pairs coming out. Um, so, it is basically the number of pairs of the interacting molecules. So, n uh, is the total number of particles or molecules n multiplied by u effective average is equal to uh, this is the number and then each one of them is uh, having an average potential which is u effective. Uh, now, this uh, distinguish between the capital U and the small u that we have written here and uh, uh, this is of course, a u uh, average and this uh, can be written as uh, or rather almost can be written as equal to half uh, n square uh, u average and uh, because we have just neglected uh, this factor minus 1 or minus half from this because n is large. Okay. So, that gives an uh, expression for u effective average which is equal to half of uh, n into u bar and uh, this is nothing but half into n and uh, we uh, sort of uh, make an integral from r 0 to some r star and, uh, and then we have a 4 pi r square uh, dr uh, divided by v and u of r. Okay. And what is this factor? This factor is really the probability of um, intermolecular distance to be between r um, between r and r plus dr. Okay. So, this is uh, how the u effective can be calculated and uh, so, u effective average is equal to half uh, n by v and then there is a 4 pi and you have a r 0 to r star and uh, there is a r square u of r dr and uh, we will take this uh, form that we have assumed here and not the Leonard Jones form this form that you see here uh, minus u 0 r 0 by r to the power s um, and s uh, we just leave it as floating that is s is a variable and as I said that s equal to 6 is most commonly used there. So, um, now uh, this will give me uh, a minus um, uh, half uh, n by v uh, 4 pi and a u 0 uh, and r 0 to r star uh, where r star is some value from uh, it varies from r 0 to r star and this is equal to r 0 over uh, r whole to the power s 
uh, and uh, uh, R square dr. Okay. Um, in fact, uh, because this is, uh, we can make it as uh, capital R zero here. Um, uh, just so let me just make it as a capital R zero, not changing much. Uh, this is just that uh, because. Uh, this limit is from R0 to R star, uh, just do not want to mix notations. So, this R0 to R star, so R0 is basically the, uh, the range uh, uh, below which uh, the potential has an infinite discontinuity, uh, repulsive discontinuity that is it goes to plus infinity and uh, for um, R greater than uh, that uh, it goes to a, a small uh, negative term at large r. So, this is uh, the r capital R and this integral is easy to solve and um, so, this u of r is taken as uh, uh, this is not r this is s okay, and r square dr and uh, this uh, of course, uh, gets you this n by v 4 pi u 0 r 0 to the power s and uh, r to the power uh, 3 minus s divided by 3 minus s and uh, it is uh, uh, taken from r 0 to r star and uh, so this uh, can be simplified and one gets it is half n over v 4 pi u 0 r 0 to the power s and uh, one has it as r star uh, to the power uh, 3 minus s divided by 3 minus s minus r 0 to the power 3 minus s divided by 3 minus s. So, that is the uh, form for u effective and uh, finally, we can uh, simplify this and, and write this as uh, so this is like half uh, n over v 4 pi uh, u naught and um, we have uh, 1 divided by uh, s minus 3. We just change this minus absorb this minus sign and it becomes s minus 3 and you have uh, uh, r 0 to the power s r star to the power 3 minus s and minus r 0 cube um, and uh, so basically uh, if you take this uh, s to be greater than 3 which is what we have uh, assumed right from the beginning that s is equal to 6. So, if s is greater than 3 um, and we take this uh, r star to be um, infinity then this term drops out and one gets a simpler form for this. So, it is a minus n over v now the minus sign returns back because you have a minus here and this is equal to 2 pi over 3 uh, r 0 cube and uh, u naught which is a range and divided by 3 s minus 3 and so on and this can be written as minus n by v a prime. So, that is the u effective which comes as minus n by v uh, a prime and let me now go and calculate the other uh, quantity that is uh, v 0. So, this is u effective is calculated and now we go ahead and calculate uh, v 0. So, this is number 2 uh, which is basically nothing but uh, let me use a color here. So, we have um, the two molecules are say uh, touching uh, each other and uh, so these are the two spheres that are touching each other and um, we now uh, take this as uh, you know the, the centers of this and the center of this to be here and now this is the radius and uh, we can construct a sphere of radius this which is the distance between the centers of each of the molecules and uh, you have to pardon me for drawing a freehand drawing of a 
circle. So, this is equal to that. Okay. So, uh, this is uh, nothing but equal to uh, this is 4 third pi r 0 cube and this is nothing but r 0 which is uh, the the radius or the distance uh, which is the uh, basically the diameter of one uh, molecule. Okay. So, uh, what is this factor that we have uh, gotten which is n into n minus 1 that is the uh, number of pairs of the interacting molecules and then you multiply it by 4 third pi r naught cube uh, and uh, if you multiply this, this becomes equal to 2 third into n square pi r 0 cube and uh, this is nothing but equal to n into v 0. Okay. So, this is a volume occupied. Uh, so, uh, no other molecule can get into inside this volume because each molecule has a certain volume. So, that is uh, given by this n into uh, v 0 and that has to be excluded. So, one can calculate v 0 equal to n into 2 pi over 3 and r 0 whole cube and this is equal to 4 n and 4 third pi um, r 0 by 2 whole cube and this is called as the molecular volume. Of course, uh, as you see that it is a half of the, uh, the distance which is, uh, which is shown here. And this is nothing but uh, n b prime, uh, where uh, b prime is equal to uh, 4 into the molecular volume that you see here. Okay. So, that is your b prime. So, now we can compute uh, the equation of state. We now got uh, uh, both these quantities that were there and had to be computed. Um, which is u effective and also the v 0 which was there in this uh, form that you uh, see here. So, uh, if you call this as equation 1, uh, then we now have uh, both these uh, quantities that you need. So, your u effective this is equation 2 which is uh, minus n by v into some a prime where a prime is given by and this quantity this is equal to a prime and uh, also we have this v 0 which is given by this um, v 0 is given by this quantity which is n b prime. So, let us call this as equation 3. So, we have um, a 2 and 3 uh, with that we are going to put it in 1. All right, so that uh, gives us uh, z equal to 1 by n factorial and putting all the other old factors that we are familiar with uh, whole to the power 3 by 2 uh, v minus v 0 and exponential minus beta u effective average okay, and whole to the power n. Um, so, this is the partition function now uh, with all these uh, interaction terms that are uh, embedded into it and how do we find pressure from here? Pressure is found from, uh, so this let us call this as equation number 4 and um, so uh, pressure is obtained from the partition function by using um, uh, 1 over beta uh, del ln z del v which is nothing but um, the uh, del f del v with the minus sign and uh, this is equal to 1 over beta uh, del del v of this quantity which is uh, n ln v minus v 0 and uh, minus n beta u effective average. Okay. So, they nicely uh, factor out and uh, we get this uh, uh, thing as uh, n k t. Uh, so, beta is 1 over k t which is now this is v minus n b prime 
and uh, minus uh, n square over uh, v square into a prime. So, that uh, gives you uh, p plus uh, a prime p plus a prime uh, n square by v square. So, I take it on the other side which is equal to nothing but n divided by v minus n v prime and k t. Okay. Uh, so, we can uh, take it to the other side this uh, thing and that gives us uh, p plus a prime by uh, into n square by v square into v minus uh, n v prime it is equal to n k t. Okay. Now, if you introduce uh, reduced volume that is volume uh, per uh, molecule that is uh, a small v which is uh, also called as a specific volume. Uh, so, this is uh, this is equal to uh, p plus uh, a by v square uh, and a v minus uh, b this is equal to r t uh, where uh, so your a is uh, a prime n square and b is equal to b prime n a uh, n and um, so on and um, what you can do is that uh, you can use this Avogadro number here uh, and write this as uh, the capital N can be written as small n into n Avogadro. So, this is these are the changes and or rather the uh, variables that are transformed and now we get this equation which is called as the van der Waals equation of state. So, starting from the, um, uh, the partition function for an interacting system or an interacting gas pairwise interaction uh, with uh, really no uh, form that is assumed excepting that it is hardcore repulsive at small distances and weakly attractive at large distances with a form which is given by uh, this, this uh, form that you see here minus u0. Um, r 0 by um, r whole to the power s and so on. So, this is really that minus u 0 uh, thing that you see here this value and so on. Okay. So, for this uh, really s has been kept uh, as a variable till the very end and uh, uh, it in fact turns out that it as long as your um, s is uh, greater than 3. Uh, this uh, equation can easily be derived the van der Waals equation of state. And uh, let us do the uh, critical points or uh, the critical isotherms for this. And the critical isotherms can be derived as uh, basically uh, this critical point uh, are predicted by this equation of state and um, so they are at some uh, T c, P c and V c uh, can be found by uh, taking this del P del V. Um, this is uh, at a given T and T c, uh, P c and V c to be equal to 0. Uh, so, this and also you know the double derivative vanishes as well. So, del square p del v 2 um, again at a given t and at t c p c and uh, v c uh, this is equal to 0 as well. And uh, one can calculate these things and get this isotherms which are in the uh, p v diagram. So, this is p and this is v. Uh, so, the t uh, greater than t c we have this uh, t uh, this is greater than t c. Uh, let me use a color for this. So, uh, the critical one is like this and 
So, this is for T uh, equal to T C let me write that here. So, T equal to T C and uh, we have this um, this uh, critical point here and, um, and we also have for T less than T C uh, we have this as So, this is T uh, less than T C. Okay. So, you get this critical isotherm. So, uh, they are at uh, 3 different uh, temperatures. Uh, this uh, the black one is for T greater than T C and the red one is at T equal to T C and uh, you have also um, this uh, term which is. So, there is uh, T less than T C. Okay. Uh, let us now uh, get into another topic uh, rather this is uh, the solution of um, the partition function. Uh, so, here we have of course, calculated the partition function for a, a given type of potential. Now, uh, let us uh, do a, a sort of cluster expansion or uh, which is also known as a high temperature expansion of these uh, quantities and uh, we introduce graphs and different kind of notations in order to calculate. Uh, these uh, effect of the potential uh, term by term and by considering uh, graphs which we are just going to introduce. So, this is another method of solution of uh, or rather uh, the leads to the solution of interacting systems. So, uh, cluster expansion. Let us see what they are. Uh, so, once again we have a Hamiltonian which is equal to y equal to 1 to n and uh, p i square over 2 m i uh, plus uh, you have a u i j uh, and um, you can have uh, j greater than i or if you do not assume anything then you put a factor of half um, and uh, let us just you know uh, carry out without any half factor, but we know that uh, in order to avoid double count, we have to have this uh, factor. Once again, uh, u i j is actually u r i minus r j as earlier. So, this we call it as u r i j. So, the canonical partition function is written as a 1 by n factorial h to the power 3 n and we have this volume integral and exponential minus beta h. Volume uh, integral is nothing but the integral over the phase space over all those 3 n coordinates and this. So, the momentum integral is easy to calculate because uh, uh, you can uh, do that easily because um, the interaction term does not involve any momentum. Uh, it is only depends upon the positional coordinates or configurational coordinates and, uh, and the only place where momentum comes is in the kinetic energy. So, that is a Gaussian integral that one can do it. So, the momentum integral uh, this is just a revision of what we have learnt earlier. So, this momentum integral is 1 by h cube and d cube p we are just doing it for one particle in uh, 3 dimensions. So, it is minus beta p square by 2 m and uh, this is equal to 4 pi by h cube root over of pi by 2 uh, m by uh, beta whole to the power 3 by 2 and this is nothing but 1 by uh, lambda de Broglie whole cube. Okay. That is the thermal de Broglie wavelength and what we have used here is that we have an e to the power minus alpha x square d x uh, from minus infinity to plus infinity we have it as root over pi by alpha and um, because this integral is not from minus infinity to plus infinity, but from 0 to infinity we bring in a factor of half and this is all what has been done here. So, uh, the lambda de Broglie wavelength just to remind you that it has this form it is 2 pi h cross square by m k t or you can write it in terms of simply h uh, not h cross. Okay. So, um, so, finally, the partition function that we have to calculate the canonical partition function it is uh, n uh, t and v this is equal to 1 by 
n factorial and uh, lambda to the power 3 n uh, where all those h etc are uh, embedded in this lambda and then you have a d cube uh, 3 n r. So, these 3 n are uh, positional coordinates and exponential of minus beta sum over uh, these uh, i n j um, and you have a u i j and assumably j is greater than i then we do not need a factor of half. So, let us just write this as uh, uh, you can write it as z uh, u, but let me write it as z n for a reason that you will see in just a moment and we will call it as z n um, it is t and v and of course, it contains also uh, the effect of the potential. So, this is z n t v and once again we have to calculate this z n t v canonical partition function which includes the um, effect of the interaction the pairwise interaction between the molecules in a gas. Okay. So, uh, for non interacting systems uh, of course, you have uh, the z n is equal to 1 because u is equal to 0. And, um, uh, and otherwise you know you have uh, these uh, effects of the interaction actually enters to z n which is what we have said. So, now consider uh, or rather introduce um, f i j is equal to exponential minus beta u i j uh, minus 1. Okay. So, this exponential minus uh, so that uh, sort of you know um, let us uh, draw uh, these. Um, so, we have this uh, we have this Leonard Jones and uh, so, this is your uh, u uh, u i j uh, which is what we have shown earlier it is the Leonard Jones form. We can also plot the other thing which is uh, so and uh, this one uh, is like this. So, this uh, red color is f i j and the black color is u i j. Okay. So, these things are plotted as a function of r. Okay. So, uh, if you want to know that uh, what is the relationship or rather how does it look like. Uh, so, they have uh, these r really aligned uh, that is the maximum of f i j and the minimum of u i j. Okay. So, uh, f i j is non zero for uh, interacting system but there is something interesting here uh, but this uh, at high temperature f i j is uh, quite small compared to unity. Okay. Uh, so, what I mean is that f i j at large temperature is a small quantity. Um, so, this uh, tells you that this f i j is uh, an appropriate quantity uh, that allows uh, high temperature expansion. All right. So, uh, we are um, going to calculate things in terms of uh, f i j. So, just to reiterate that for the interacting system this is equal to 0 that is the 0th order of f i j is equal to 0 and uh, we can write down the partition function um, which is uh, we have already taken this n. So, we write it as v t 
that is uh, I mean n is uh, for the n particle uh, sort of uh, being there in the system and we will soon call it as a n particle cluster and uh, because uh, we have taken out this uh, uh, exponential or rather replace the exponential by this f i j it becomes a you know a product of 1 plus f i j ok. Uh, so, this is uh, quite helpful in the sense that uh, that we have now these products of f i j. So, uh, there are terms which are f i j, f j k, f k l and so on so forth and you see that uh, this z n is what we have written which is um, the configurational coordinates is integrated over an exponential minus beta u. Now, this beta u is written as um, uh, 1 plus f i j uh, exponential minus beta u is f i j plus 1 and so this is simply product of f i j plus 1 ok. So, that is the thing that we have to calculate. So, now we uh, resort to what is called as a graphic expansion. So, we start drawing graphs uh, in order to expand this product that you see here and uh, calculate uh, these products uh, uh, using these graphs. And uh, let us see that um, if you expand this z n, uh, I believe it is clear uh, what is z n and what is its relation to the canonical partition function that we want to calculate that is here in this equation. Let us call this as equation 1. So, the total uh, partition function canonical partition function is this uh, factor which is um, uh, like this uh, 1 by n factorial the Gibbs correction factor and uh, the thermal de Broglie wavelength which is lambda to the power 3 n and then multiplied by z n and this z n is what we uh, need to calculate and as I said that we will do a graphic expansion of this. So, this is equal to d to the power 3 n r and um, it is like uh, sum over f i j. Uh, we uh, ignore these indices because they are uh, you know these indices will all be there. So, i j and uh, then there are terms such as uh, uh, f i j, uh, f k l um, and so on ok. So, all these terms will be there there will be f i j, f k l and f uh, m n and so on so forth. So, there will be um, 3 such terms and 4 such uh, terms, terms means this uh, containing these f's. So, they will all be there. So, uh, now a uh, pairing of indices uh, will uh, include all possible pairings. Uh, it will probably be helpful if we give an example uh, in order to elucidate some of this. Uh, Let us uh, talk about 8 particle graph. Which means that we talk about z 8 ok. And uh, so, these are written as uh, like uh, they are uh, numbers and circles. So, these are this particle number and they are written within circles. So, it is 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 5, 6 uh, and 7, 8 ok. And all possible pairings are possible in the sense that there could be uh, clusters of uh, one particle, clusters of two particles cluster of uh, 3 particles and 4 and 5 and so on and uh, arbitrary number of particles. So, uh, we can uh, take so first example is that uh, uh, let us take terms of the form um, f i j f k l ok. And in particular choose i equal to 3, uh, j equal to 4, uh, k equal to 6, l equal to 8 ok. And um, uh, so, for all these uh, i j k l 
once again we write this uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, a bit of exercise but uh, they uh, worth it because then you understand uh, what kind of pairing we are talking about and let me show it with uh, color. So, uh, we have now a 3, 4 pairing okay, uh, and we have a pairing between 6 and 8. So, that is what is committed here uh, because you have a i equal to 3, j equal to 4 and k equal to 6 and l equal to 8. So, these are the pairing. So, the corresponding expression can be written as um, uh, this expression that is uh, this thing can be written as uh, d cube r 1. Uh, d cube r 2 all these are integrated over uh, d cube of r 5 uh, d cube of r 7 and now we have this uh, let us introduce a bracket and in which we have a d cube r 3 uh, d cube r 4 and we have a f 3 4. Now, this are not uh, independent integrals anymore uh, because there is a f 3 4 which connects the coordinates 3 and 4 and uh, also these uh, 6 and 8 are connected as well. So, this is d cube 6 uh, sorry r 8 uh, f of 6 8. Okay. These are the terms that we have for this uh, and if you want the they are symbolically can also be shown as uh, uh, this is like a, a dot with a 2, a dot with a 5, a dot with a 7 um, and then we have a dot which is a 3 and a 5. There is a connection, we will just write it in a moment and then there is a 6, uh, sorry 3 and 4 not 5. So, 3 and 4 and 6 and 8 there is a connection and uh, now we can write this connections here as with a red line and so on. Okay. So, this term is factorized as, uh, as above. So, this means that there are uh, clusters of um, um, 4 uh, 1 particle cluster. So, 4 1 particle cluster, uh, 2 2 particle clusters. That is considered for this uh, z equal to 8. Let us see some other combinations. Let us call this as B. Um, so, uh, now let us consider uh, a product of 3 Fij's. Okay. Um, and uh, in particular, uh, let us talk about a product uh, for example, f 1 2, uh, f 1 4, uh, f 6 7. Okay. And uh, this can be written as, uh, let me write down the expression and then we will uh, show it in a graph. So, this is, uh, so which are the independent or one particle clusters uh, 3 and 5. So, we have a d cube r 3 and we have a d cube r 5 and of course, r 8 as well. Uh, so, d cube r 8 and now we have these um, uh, d cube r 1, um, d cube r 2 and we have uh, f 1 2. Uh, this cannot be factorized unless you do the integral um, and uh, of course, there are uh, you have to also do because uh, 1 is there with 4 as well. So, d cube r 4 and we have um, f 1 2 f 1 4 and we have a 2 particle cluster which is uh, f uh, d cube r 6 d cube r 7 uh, and uh, f of 6 7 and so on. Okay. So, uh, so there are uh, 3 uh, 1 particle clusters um, then there are 1 3 particle clusters cluster rather 
and one um, uh, two particle cluster. Okay. And uh, if you uh, symbolically want to show it the way we have done it uh, earlier. So, we have a 3 here uh, dotted with a 5 here dotted with a 8 here and then uh, we have a so, we have this uh, 1 which is connected to both 2 and 4, okay. we will write that connection and uh, we also have uh, uh, 6 connected to 7. Okay. So, let me write down those connections. So, there is a connection here, there is a connection here and then there is a connection here. So, this uh, 3 particle graph can be written as uh, for example, uh, this one is the 3 particle graph, okay. 3 particle graph. So, all possible combinations are there. So, there could be a just a 1 particle cluster, 2 particles, 3 particles, 4 particles, 5, 6, 7, all they can be all connected to um, uh, some of them or all of them, okay. So, uh, for example, I mean uh, now it is important to uh, show that or rather it is important to keep in mind uh, that uh, graphs uh, of a same topology or which is also called as a connectivity. Let us use this word connectivity more uh, sort of which is more relevant in this, um, uh, but different uh, particle labels. are distinct. Okay. What I mean is the following, uh, this let me uh, underline this and uh, it is also this one is underlined. So, what is meant by that is the following that if you have um, a 1 uh, and a 2 and a 3 uh, and we have a 5 and a 6 and a 7 say for example or 8 uh, does not matter. I mean uh, so this one these connections that you have uh, these are 3 particle graphs, but uh, they are distinct. So, these are, are distinct and uh, because they are distinct they have to be counted separately. Before you get lost with all these graphs and all that, uh, uh, let me just remind you that we are just simply trying to calculate the um, partition function of a uh, interacting system or an interacting gas. And um, uh, this is quite uh, important to say that we are really in the gaseous phase and not close to the transition that we have uh, talked about this critical isotherms TCPC and VC. So, we are really in the uh, well behaved gaseous phase uh, because otherwise these expansions may uh, fail miserably. And in doing so, we are writing down terms uh, which are uh, so your uh, uh, this uh, partition function has a form which is exponential minus beta uij. We change this uh, label to fij and uh, then it becomes a product. Now, when it becomes a product in terms of Fij, we have terms which are F12, F23, etc. All of them are there. They all would, uh, you know, come uh, pairwise uh, because it's a pairwise interaction. And uh, also, um, uh, we have uh, now uh, considered for a given value of n, which is n equal to eight, is considered. We have seen that there could be possibility of. Uh, uh, some one particle cluster, some two particle cluster, some three particles, some four particle, five, six and even uh, seven, eight particle clusters. So, uh, in general, um, so the partition function for the interacting system can be written as
Uh, so, this uh, z uh, n v t uh, is equal to sum of uh, distinct n particle graphs. This is an important thing and what we mean by n particle graphs. So, uh, by definition this n particle graphs are defined as uh, n distinct circles, I mean circles is what we are uh, denoting it by uh, numbered uh, 1, 2 all the way up to n uh, with uh, you know lines uh, with uh, basically red lines that we are showing with red lines um, linking some or all of them that is the definition of n particle clusters. Okay? And uh, Z n is sort of you have to sum over all the clusters, all possible clusters and while doing so you have to keep in mind that um, this kind of a two particle uh, or rather a three particle cluster uh, has to be uh, all of these have to be counted separately. They are distinct and they have to be counted separately. Okay? So, let us just talk about an L cluster graph. Um, so, an L cluster graph uh, or this uh, comprising of uh, L sites uh, is a connected L particle graph for which the integral cannot be factorized. That is clear because uh, if you consider L particle graph, then uh, there is no way that uh, the integral cannot be factorized. That you see that here uh, in this, uh, there is a two particle graph which uh, we cannot, uh, or rather, there is a this connection of uh, three uh, cluster, and then uh, this cannot be uh, factorized any farther. Okay, so uh, we give another example. Say, uh, let's consider a, a five particle cluster. and uh, let us write them as 1 and uh, 3 and 2 and 4 and a 5 here and uh, why is a uh, 5 particle is that there is a connection here, 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 there is a connection here. Uh, there is no connection between 4 and 5 and uh, this can be written as uh, uh, in terms of uh, expression, this is d cube r 1, d cube r 2, uh, d cube r 3, uh, d cube r 4 and d cube r 5 and uh, we have terms such as f 1 2, f 1 3, uh, f 1 4, um, f uh, 1 5. Um, and uh, f uh, 3 4 okay? and this cannot be uh, factorized. Uh, we just introduce one more for today and then uh, continue uh, with the next class. So, uh, let us talk about this identical and non-identical clusters. Okay. 
and what are identical clusters? Uh, there is 1, 2 and 3. Um, this is equivalent to, uh, we will we'll write those uh, red lines, uh, 1, 2 and 3. Uh, that is equivalent to 1, 2 and 3 and not equivalent to uh, 1, 2 and 3. Uh, please wait till I uh, draw those uh, red lines. Uh, okay. So, uh, this is uh, connected and that is perfectly fine. So, 1, 2 and 3 that is connected that is fine and 1, 2 and 3 that is fine. They are all identical, but when all of them are connected, then that is not the equivalent. So, this is a, a difference between identical and non-identical clusters. So, even if they are uh, you know identical clusters, there would be a degeneracy and this degeneracy has to be uh, taken into account. And uh, when we uh, consider the cluster integrals, uh, these will become very important for us to consider. So, uh, we uh, stop here with this uh, discussion for now, because this has to go on for some time. And finally, uh, summing over all these graphs or integrating over you know all these uh, expressions that you see and uh, one can actually uh, land up with the, uh, this partition function, which is uh, what is our ultimate goal. Uh, so, uh, we stop here for today and then continue uh, uh, in the next class. Thank you.